as you can see, the birds have taken opportune moment to live aboard. There is bird's mess everywhere in the boat. Um, so all over the table, the floors, the chart table, the cooker, the batteries, literally everywhere. This essentially has been a floating bird's house um, all throughout this kind of lockdown period. So we've got a huge amount of cleaning up to do first. I don't have any cleaning products with me today. Uh, this was just a recce really, just to see um, the state of the boat and what I can do. What I have done today is get the electric on board and get the lights set up and everything like that so we can actually see what's going on uh, around here again. Um, what you'll notice is the engine's in down there um, and I can tell you a little bit more about that. So I had to lift, had to lift the engine out um, because the engine bearers were moving around a bit when uh, Andromeda's first lifted out of the water and also there was a garboard, uh, there was a screw in the garboard plank that I pulled out and I knew that was going into a floor timber underneath the coupling, underneath the engine bearers. So that was a massive job to get the engine out, get the bearers out, make a new floor timber, refit that. Um, for me that was a huge job, probably the biggest job I've done so far. Um, I've refastened the engine bearers with new stainless um, coach bolts, coach screws even. Um, they're much chunkier than what was in there before and I'm happy that the engine is you know, sturdily mounted it's a very big engine for a very small space, so it's quite, it was quite difficult to get it to fit in there. While the engine has been out of the boat, I've fully serviced the engine, um, taken it all apart, painted it, uh, changed all of the filters, quite a lot of gaskets, and all of the fluids and you know impeller, usual kind of stuff really. So I'm happy and confident that the engine's going to run okay. It's a good engine. Uh, before reinstalling the engine. Uh, we spent quite a lot of money on some new um, fireproof, soundproof stuff to stick around sort of the engine bay if you like, that section where the engine is. So that stuff was extortionately expensive but I thought that is the best time to put it in there and we, you know, it's a family cruising boat, we want everything to be as safe as possible. So um, we dipped into Andromeda's fund quite heavily to get that stuff stuck in there. Um, but it looks pretty good and we're pretty happy with how it's come out. We've also fitted the water tanks underneath the quarter berths, two massive stainless tanks and the outlets for them come out near the engine um, and there's another tank that's in the forecastle, another fresh water tank um, but I'm not too worried about the kind of fresh water plumbing side of things at the moment. If we need to we can take bottles of water out sailing with us. Uh, the main objective really is to get Andromeda in the water and get her sailing but that's one of the big changes that's happened uh, since I last spoke to you all. As well you'll see um, the cooker, Taylor's cooker is fitted over here. Um, we've played around with this cooker quite a lot. I've used Taylor's cookers quite a bit in the past and I understand the concept of them and I know that they're very serviceable um, but this one is a little bit uh, ropey I would say. Um, it can be restored, it's just a bit of surface rust in places but again, with this being a family boat that we want to go out sailing on and family members and friends might come with us from time to time, I quite honestly prefer the idea of a gas cooker. I know that's going to um, perhaps be a controversial opinion um, because pressurised gas can obviously be dangerous, um, but the amount of times I've seen people send a three foot yellow flame into the cabin on a Taylor's cooker where there's curtains for example in the galley um, it only takes one accident to, to make a big mess with a Taylor's cooker not only that the paraffin doesn't really smell great if you spill it in the cabin which I have done a couple of times um, and the other big risk with the Taylor's paraffin stove is if you're lighting it with meths um, if you turn the cooker off and it remains warm for a little while and then somebody else goes to turn it on they could pour meths directly onto quite a hot burner or quite a warm burner and that can be very dangerous so if you're single handing as I used to do and you're using a Taylor's cooker on your own and you know how to use it I think it's a perfectly safe piece of equipment um, I just think on Andromeda you know she deserves something a little bit more up to date a little bit safer something that I would be comfortable with anybody knowing how to use 
So, um, but it, it would be good to get your opinions on that. I know there'll be some really salty gaffers out there that are Taylor's fanatics. I don't doubt that they're well-engineered pieces of kit. Um, but likewise, I think there probably will be some people out there that sort of understand my decision in removing that cooker. So let me know what you think. Okay, we're back aboard Andromeda and Hannah's helping me out today. Uh, we're having a go at trying to line the engine up with the prop shaft. Uh, I've managed to get it fairly close with the adjustment on the uh, engine mounts, adjusting things up and down and left and right a little bit. Um, I'm not entirely sure that it's quite right yet, but what we need to do is rotate the propeller um, and see how much the coupling moves when the propeller is rotated to get a bit of an idea of it. And then we're going to use some shims to measure the distance between the drive flange on the back of the engine and the coupling on the front of the prop shaft. Now the engine's sitting on rubber mounts and luckily we've got a big fat rubber coupling so that does give us a little bit of leeway when it comes to um, getting things lined up but we still want to try and get things as close as possible. So we're just going to have a go at rotating the propeller just to kind of see how well things line up and then we'll take it from there. If I lift it up, can you push it now? There you go, yep. Yeah. That's good. That's that's into the engine now. So now can you rotate it? Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, it's quite far out at the moment. I need to drop the front of the engine slightly. Okay, so not much adjustment required there. We've got that prop nicely lined up now. Uh, it, just rotating it, you can actually see where the light comes and goes as it's doing this. Um, but we've got it to a point now where it's flush all the way around as it rotates. Um, because, like I say, it's got rubbers all around and on the coupling, um, that will be good enough for us to get started for now. Uh, we're not going to be doing any extreme sailing to start with. And just while everything beds in and the boat changes shape a little bit as she takes up and that kind of thing, then we might have to make a few small adjustments on those engine mounts as, as it gets bedded in. But to start with, um, that's absolutely fine and a bit of a luxury having a rubber coupling. Um, we haven't got to worry about things being absolutely perfectly in line um, to the tenth of a millimetre or anything like that. Um, so that's, that's absolutely fine and that's great. So. Um, We'll kind of call it a day for there while I go and dig out the nuts for the coupling so that we can then get it bolted up tight and start reconnecting everything to do with the engine, ancillaries, electronics, cooling system uh, and all of that kind of stuff. This weather is so nice. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and it's forecast to snow tomorrow. Pub's open for the first time in a long time, so uh, yeah. we're going to get a drink, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so why are we drinking these J2O's? Because the pub is not allowed to serve alcohol, even though we thought it was. Uh, devastating. Devastating. I mean, these are nice, you know, but it's just not the same as a pint of cider in the sun. <laughs> Is it? Not exactly, no. 